So my mother is a drinking gourd. She is a runaway slave along a shore. My mother is a still river. Her folks from Mississippi, but she bred black south side of Chicago in the 70s. My mother is great migration. She got a gambler for a father and a rifle for a mother. My mother is associate's degree in early childhood education. It's three credits short from a BA. It's food stuck in vending machine. My mama still ain't got what she paid for. It's all curse out the clerk at the cashier counter. It's all, I guess y'all are gonna have to work something out because I'm not about to pay for that. My mother is the difference between ghetto and hood. It's a rumor cell, not a thrift store. My mother is a Christian. It's church going. It's leave church early. Don't sing in the choir no more because things seem shady behind the pulpit. My mother is two jobs in an empty piggy bank. It's section eight for retirement plan. It's no savings account, no trust fund, no money to the 15th of the month. My mother is machete for speech. It's too smart to be killed or followed. My mother is a blade in a back pocket. It's a loud joke in a juke bar. Ha ha, my mother is an oxymoron. It's homophobic with a strap on for a daughter. My mother is the strong black woman behind every disappearing, vanishing, missing, murdered, dead black man. My mother mother is an open casket. It's meant to hold bodies. It's a vacant lot next to a boarded up home. My mother is home. It's sanctuary. It's God. It's how black don't crack. My mother's spine don't bend. My mother is still. My mother is a steel bullet, a loaded shotgun, waiting. Good evening, everybody. How's it going? You guys look absolutely amazing. I'm just kidding, I can't see a single one of you, but I bet you guys look absolutely amazing. My name is Portia Olaiwola. I am from Chicago's most southern side, but I live in Boston. Uh, my family lives here. Shout out to my mama, she right there. Um, yeah, I'm so excited and so nervous, okay? I could vomit, but I won't because that would be weird. Um, though you should know I've already imagined myself doing that. I apologize <laughs> to the front row um, for that image. No, uh, I'm gonna do a couple of poems, is that cool? After all that, it is why you came here. So, um, if you're interested in a prompt, I love to give out prompts. The prompt is to start it off with a joke. A dyke walks into a bar and the bartender asks if she wants to liquor. A dyke walks around in the world and the joke is on her. A dyke comes out the closet and all the mouths cackle all the hands pick up stone. All the mothers bury their daughters. A dyke does nothing, holds up the wall at a club, and all the fems still ask this hoe's name. All the straight women lean in, all the lips part singing. A dyke prays in a temple and a sanctuary sprouts eyes, and the walls grow teeth. A dyke cracks into a smile on a TV sitcom and doesn't outlive the season finale. A dyke finds solace in another dyke's arms, and just kidding, the joke is still on her. Her. A dyke stumbles into a white queer party and no one sees her. No one can unblend the nighttime from the nigga. A dyke drinks a beer at a gay club and a gay man grabs her ass, reminds her that what is hers is not. A dyke brings a date to the family reunion and they both get hung from the family tree. A dyke waits for the bus and haha, -ha, never makes it home. A dyke grinds on the dance floor and bullets bring her knees to a buckle and she fall out dead with laughter. So this is live, shout out to all my friends 
and my family that's online watching this, all those people that have been texting me, bothering me. Um, I am working on a book. Um, I spent all of 2017 writing the book. It's forthcoming with button poetry in the fall. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited and pretty pumped up about it. I'm gonna read some new work um, from it. Is that cool? Word. So I'm gonna tell you a story first, I guess, about this. But um, I was doing a feature at a college in Boston, and afterwards, this, this guy with a long, shaggy, blonde ponytail comes up to me, and he says, don't be offended when I say this, but you remind me of Biggie Smalls. And so this is called Notorious. <laughs> if I shouldn't be offended, why do you say something you believe has a chance of offending me? <laughs> Offend meaning to hit, strike, against. When you say offend, do you mean the blackness is the strike or the fatness is against me? He says this and I become who he believes I am. My hands thicken, my fingers plump, my long twist shrivels into a short afro, my chin oceans a shadow, my cheeks tumor typhoons, my lips are fat and pink, each word drags itself out my mouth like a guarded hearse, each line break squeezes a song, a rap, a dance beat for this boy tonight. Biggie Smalls and I are both Geminis. We are both twins of each other. <laughs> we both tar, dark, thick. It's a wonder how we heave and heave and heave and stand behind a mic at all. We all black and ugly as ever. However, we spell well, B-I-G, all rhyme and good time. We both love it when you drive by and call us big. Papa, ain't you ever been popped off, been shot at? been blown up like the world trade. Don't you like your meat center medium? Brown skin, riff red nectar, running off the curb of the plate. The difference between a fat black nigga rapping and a fat black dyke poeming is in the cadence of the eulogy spit. Or the difference between a fat black nigga rapping and a fat black dyke poeming is in the sway of the women who love to love them back. It is September 2016. I'm on a stage in Texas reading poems outdoors. Perspiration jogs from my tight curls and finds shelter along my lips. My underarms are literally a swamp. And still, I do a rap I wrote. And they laugh. Despite the heat, they sing along. Hands reach up and surrender. I am a secular God, a holy, holy ghost. Words jetting out like jamboree, and I worry I look too much like a concert, like black joy leaping, like a hip hop song in the 80s. A house party walled in saturation, like summertime, like somebody, everybody wanna be a part of, like a sweet jam, sweating, blasting, Juicy. <laughs> Speaking of sweating, huh, yeah. <laughs> um, these lights, you know, I can't see you, but they could see me, right? Um, yeah, so the book is based in Afrofuturism magical realism, sci-fi fantasy, I'm a nerd. Sometimes I identify as Jon Snow. Um, and so this is one of those weird poems um, that I put in there. Um, it is inspired by my good friend Sam Rush. Um, yeah, I'll just read it. Today is a day of tiny massacres where the flight attendant laughs at your last name or you get pulled over on your way home from tour, 
or the European foreigner asks you where to buy drugs at the bar. And so, before I leave my home, I remove my skin. I pull the nude zipper from under my chin down to my waist. I reach to my shoulder and peel back the dark bark brown coating. I pull the sheath to my knees and step out of my skin like it is a jumpsuit I spent too much time letting the outside get on. I hang my skin over arms of a chair like a leather jacket, wrinkles a rippled heirloom, defaced myself in the mirror, this flesh, all veins and blood and meat, animal, large eyes, spear, stare, back, black, blooming, pink, salmon, budding bright red lines running all over my body like soldiers. How's everybody doing? You guys like that first round of the slam? Yes, give it up for your host one time. Shouts out to Denez. Homie is the business. All right, I'm gonna do a quick experimental piece. This is not on my list. This is not on my list, but I decided to do it. Um, and we'll just make it quick if I go over time, right? Okay. Um, it's called After James Brown. Say it. Say it. Say it loud. Say black. Say it. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Say it. Say it. Sang it. Say it proud. Say it loud. Say it black. Black, look at here, it, it, say black, say it black, say I black, it black, I black, it black, all right now, say it, say it, sing it, say it proud, say it loud, say it black, black it, black it proud, black it loud, say it loud, I'm black, it black, I'm black, it black, it loud, good God, it loud, say it loud and black. Say it loud and it black. Say I'm black and I'm loud. Good God, say it back. Say it black, black. Say it proud, black. Say it proud, black, proud, black, black. Say it loud. Say it black. Say it back. Look at here, say it. Sang it. Sang it. Say I'm black. I'm loud. Say it. Good God, say it. Sang it, <laughs> sang it, Lord of Lord. <laughs> Thank you guys for clapping. I know you don't have to do that. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna do a couple of haikus, is that cool? Um, I'm, I love haikus. For people who do not know, haikus are traditional uh, Japanese style of poetry, 17 syllables, three lines, five, seven, five. They're short, they're quick. Um, I've been working on a series called the Be Like series, like so-and-so, Be Like, or et cetera. So we'll see, we'll see. One, white liberals be like, hashtag Black Lives Matter, then they swing their dreads. <laughs> Two, black girls be like, that ain't grease. That's my black girl shining, you welcome. So true story, I was overseas with my partner and I bought enough shea butter uh, for myself, right? Um, and then 
she was using all of my shea butter and then got down to the last, like the last little bit of the shea butter. And Lord behold, she's very greasy. And I'm like, wow, like ain't no more shea butter, but you know, you look shiny and that's cool. I didn't, I didn't say this. I just thought this in my mind. And then <clears throat> I went in for a hug. And then I, when I came out, I saw there was grease on my, on my shirt. And I was like, babe, you got a little grease on my shirt. She's like, that ain't grease. That's my black girl, Sean. You welcome. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Like, that ain't my shea butter. <laughs> I'm not no black girl. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Three, this one is experimental. Beyonce be like, how? Oh. <laughs> how, how, yeah. <laughs> and Jay-Z be like, <laughs> Four. Black lesbians be like, bae, braid my hair. Then we do it after. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> Somebody is cracking up based on a true story for some of us, no. Um, so I've been also reimagining fairy tales. Um, you know, the whole magical realism thing. I am a Disney fan and I'm ashamed to admit it. Um, but yeah, I, didn't, I never saw, I, I was like obsessed with the videos and like at one point on my bucket list was to have a whole Disney movie collection. I don't know why, I don't know if I wanna talk about it, but um, I, I realized that I never saw myself in them. Um, and so I've begun to write them and just like say, hey, you know, today I'm Ursula and they're Ursula walking around, now what's she about to do, right? Um, so people remember the story of Rapunzel? Yeah. Yes, she had long hair, she lived in a tower, bye, 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 that's all you need to know. Um, the title is a haiku. It's called Tangled, AKA Rapunzel AKA long hair, don't care, and what? <laughs> so I'm standing in the checkout line at the grocery store. Been standing, waiting patiently. I mean, at least I ain't looking busted. My hair is laid and I got these freshies on my feet, so at the minimum, if I'm out here for this long, at least I give the people something kind to look at. My sister say, don't matter if the lights are cut off at the crib or if uncle takes over your bed and you don't have a place to sleep, stay dressed to impressed. In other words, stay fly. Say, you never know who you're going to see out here in these streets. And I'm thinking I might see the whole damn city because for some reason, unknown to me, they only got one register open tonight. I bust open my flame of hearts to curve my hunger. I'm too pressed to get back to the high rise at Cabrini. Anyway, it's my turn and I start loading my groceries onto the moving conveyor belt at the counter. I see the cashier scanning, all frantic and shit, and then he takes the time to look up at me, you know, like I'm a person or whatever. He says, wow, I really love your hair. It's beautiful and I think about time. Cause I knew I was looking like a bag of money. About time. Somebody noticed all this fine, about time I get ready to say thank you, this freckle-faced redhead says, if you don't mind me asking, is it yours? Is it weave? Can I touch it? <laughs> and then this pumpkin-looking motherfucker is no longer touching my groceries, but he's got his paled, crusty sword fingers in my hair, and I don't say anything, which is crazy, because I'm known to cut a bitch quick for just looking at me too long in the projects. But here, I feel stiff, like a brick high-rise building, or a redwood coffin, like the black dress they buried my mother in, like my brother. And all I could think about is death. I mean, 
I could feel his fingers in my hair, but I think I'm dead. And I wonder if I ever belong to me anyway. I wonder if I'm just a beautiful thing meant for the world to make theirs. I think about how I gave myself something kind to look at in this ugly world. Now he gonna go and touch it and make it his too. I think I must not belong to me, I'm his too. He touched the whole world and it's his too. I wish I was kin to Medusa right now. Wish my hair would grow heads and bite his fingers bloody and he would jerk back his hands. I wish my hair could morph into switchblades, machetes, or knives. I wish each strand was a rope so I could hang each of his fingers to death, levitate his hands from my scalp. Don't he know my scalp is holy ground? My hair is black magic. I think I put a spell on you, boy. No. I scream to no one. As I hand him the money, yeah, I like to do that poem. One, I love persona pieces to step outside myself, and also I just it's, it's my way of talking about microaggressions, you know, that happen like all the time. Um, and I think about, you know, um, doctors or scientists, whomever. Mm. Um, they say that there's like um, three immediate responses to violence, right? And I, that's how I think of microaggressions as like many acts of violence um, that you either freeze, fight, or flight, right? And I, and I just have to validate myself every time in whichever ways I react to microaggressions, whether it be cursing somebody out in that moment or writing a poem about it three weeks later, right? That all of these things are valid and okay. Um, and I don't know if I'm saying that to you or if I'm saying that to me, but. Okay. No, I can't run for office. This is a long story. I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> wow. So I'm only going to do two more poems. But I'm excited about these poems. Um, yeah, so what do I want to tell you? I want to tell you that um, I've been writing this book, um, and it's been great. Um, and in June, or for my birthday, I, I treated myself to a writing retreat somewhere in Monterey, Mexico, on top of a mountain. It was awesome and beautiful. Um, and I spent a lot of time singing um, and um, just, like, thinking and, like, being in it. Um, and I started this poem, I spent like five hours just like um, looking up the U.S. Census and like historical U.S. Census from 1850 in particular, um, just thinking about my family lineage and um, like trying to see what plantation we came from. Um, and so I did a lot of thinking there, um, but I didn't have a chance to like actually sit down and write the poem um, to relatively recently. Um, doesn't have a title yet, but I do hope you enjoy. And uh, new, newly memorized, so I'm trying to get, I'm trying to do this, okay? <laughs> I'm like literally thinking of the first word. Don't judge me. <laughs> I got it. I got it. All right. After the Civil War. Many recently freed slaves took a last name like Freedman or Freeman. Others took the last name of their slave masters. Some because they had to swiftly give a name to their newly acquired citizenship. Others with the hopes that they may be reunited with family who have been sold or separated during the institution of slavery. My mother's maiden name is Beatty, spelled B-A-T-T-I-E. Her family is from Mississippi. My grandmother's name is Bessie Beatty. Her mother, my great-grandmother, is named Elizabeth Beatty. In 1850, during the U.S. Census, they do not list a person's property. Just the names of slave owners and the count 
of the slaves in Mississippi, there was a woman by the name of Elizabeth Beatty, spelled B-E-A-T-Y, who owned over 50 slaves. And I wonder if this is the cotton plantation my family roots grew from. I wonder if this is the name my ancestors placed aside their papers and fled the plantation with. Is there a magnolia tree down in Panola, Mississippi that has all of my family's blood? Williams is the most common last name for black folks. John Williams of the Louisiana plantation owned over 218 black people. After Williams, there is Johnson, then Smith, Jones, Brown, Jackson. Racial traumas and triggers are a formal greeting when we call our oppressor's name to introduce ourselves. When our names are a historical leash, every time I meet a black person with the last name Beatty, I wonder if we are finally attending the family reunion. Every time I meet a white person with the last name Beatty, I wonder if they know what their family has done, what abuse has allowed them their breath. What a privilege to know which end of the whipping whip has your name on it, to know exactly what your name is attached to, to have a name embroidered on the bedroom door instead of the quarters. What a privilege on the job application, at the bank, at the airport, in the emergency room. And people wonder about black names, why the names aren't shorter, why the runaway syllables aren't easier to catch, why our names chime like music when they traverse between lobes about why we name our children after cars, after movement, after freedom, about why black names are always spelled with distinction, while black names always have a flair. It's because countries who declare independence get to name themselves, because niggas will always know reclamation. And when our names do not have your lineage, when our names are not what you expect, then what did you expect? For us to introduce ourselves, still running. For us to shake hands, still dripping the blood you drew. So this is my last poem. What I am supposed to tell you is that I have a chat book at that table for sale. Yeah. <laughs> That's my mama. Um, uh, buy it. And if you maybe can't afford it or et cetera, et cetera, just talk to me. Um, and let's be friends and let's connect via social media or something. Um, yeah, so this last poem is an ode to my mouth. Um, I believe that um, my writing is a little unorthodox, um, a little untraditional. Um, I believe it's infrapolitical, right? It's like a rebellion, um, simply because of the way in which it's written, right? Um, yeah, it goes against a lot of things. Um, and so I guess I wanna pay homage to that. And so this is it, I hope you enjoy. Ode to my mouth. Mouth, a basket. Mouth, give, give, give. Mouth, eager. Mouth, silent. Mouth, a river. A lake, say, give me what mine is. Mouth, a house. House got a family of eight that like to stay up late and talk shit. Mouth, play dominoes. Mouth, curse. Mouth pray, mouth come from my mama mouth, my mama mouth big, mama mouth don't stop moving, mama mouth run off, mouth hungry, got teeth, mouth eat, mouth black, mouth dark, it got a regurgitating history, mouth heard too much, now it don't know how to shut itself, mouth wide, mouth a train, mouth coming for who coming, mouth say you can't have all this gutter, all this non-publishable, mouth say so, 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 say salt, 
salt mouth a rifle, mouth bang bang, mouth cool, mouth got cool words falling out itself and landing in between white people's cheeks, mouth on fleek, mouth hip, mouth finesse, million dollar mouth. Mind your and stay outside my mouth, mouth. Dig you a place to lay mouth. Bury you sweet sugar cane mouth, hold you tight. Wrap you around its smut. Mouth squeeze, mouth choke, mouth fat hole, swallow you, swallow you, swallow you, gone. Thank you guys so much! Thank you guys so much, you're so awesome. And come chat with me.